Hi guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today we are going to learn how to create our own tessellations just like M.C. Escher. So in the end, you're going to have a piece that ha is all tessellated all the way across the entire page. But let's see where we start. So you're first going to start with a note card. And it doesn't matter if you're on the line side or the white side. Just pick one side to work on today. And you are going to um, take one end and make a shape with it. So let's just say I decide to do that. I want to go from corner all the way to corner. That's going to make this the easiest. I don't want to swoop back on the edge here and then come back out. I want my line to go from the corner, come into the piece, and then end at the other corner. Okay. Then I'm going to cut that piece out. I don't want to have any little like slivers that aren't part of the piece. So I'm just cutting this into two pieces. I'm not going to go back and trim anything else because I want to keep this um, a good tessellation. If I have little pieces missing, my like puzzle will not fit back together. Okay, so there we have that. Now with this, I'm going to slide it straight across. And I love the line side of the note card because my red line is on, my, my red is at the top and it matches and all my blue lines match up. Then I'm going to take a little piece of tape and you guys will probably use masking tape, which is in my back closet. So I just happen to have some painter's tape up here at my desk today. I'm going to line it up really carefully and just tape that seam. I want to make sure the tape doesn't come out into my shape. Okay, so I did side to side and now I'm going to do either top to bottom or bottom to top, your choice. Um, and again, I'm going to go from corner to corner, or at least start in this corner and match it up with that corner. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here and go like that. So now I'm going to cut that line. I know that this corner is going to match up with the top corner up here. So if I cut this out, I want my line side to stay up. I shouldn't have anything taped together in the end. It has lines for one part and then blank for the other part because that means I flipped my piece over. Okay, and then I'm just gonna place this back down so I know which way it goes and then slide it right up. Now for this one, I probably want a little bit of a longer piece of tape to make sure that it's secure. My lines are up on both the main piece of the note card and on the piece I'm adding. Might have gotten a little too much. I'm just gonna put that tape on. Right here I got too much, so I'm just gonna wrap that over. And then I'm gonna make sure that I line up corner to corner. So right there. Okay, now I have my tessellation. I'm gonna grab my blank piece of paper. Somewhere. And on the back, I want you to start by writing your name lightly with pencil so it doesn't show through in your section. So if you're 5A, 5B, or 5C. And then we found that the easiest way to do this is to put your tessellation right in the middle and trace it. I'm going to trace really carefully I'm using a Sharpie marker. Some people prefer to start with pencil and then go to Sharpie. I guess that's an artist preference thing. For you guys, I think you'll see it a lot better if I use Sharpie. Okay, so right in the center, there's my piece. Okay, so then we are going to move our stencil. We want to stay the line side up or whichever side you are on. So I'm on the tape side, and I'm going to scooch this over, and I'm going to put it in there. And if it doesn't line up just perfectly, that's fine. Just kind of get it in the best that you can. 
And then you're going to trace what you see on the paper. When you get to the edge, obviously stop. Don't draw on the desk. And then I'm going to finish this row off by lining up my stencil over here or my tessellation shape and tracing all that. Once I have my middle row done, then I'm going to start on my next row. I'm going to line up my shape again, and I'm going to trace it. Now, the biggest mistake that I see on these is people will do the outside of the shape. They'll do this side. They'll do this side. But they will forget to do this little bottom part down here. So I have a little loop here, a medium-sized loop here, and a bigger one here. Don't forget all of those. Okay. And if you lift up your stencil and you're like, whoa, I missed it, just kind of finish it off. Then you want to check over here and make sure if there's any pieces you missed because it looks like it would be okay, but really there's a piece down here that I need to draw in there, isn't there? And then the same thing over here. Check this side. It looked fine, but look, there's two loops I need to add right there. And when I'm done with that, then I can go to my top row. I always like to start in the middle. It's easiest to kind of correct any little errors that might come. If I start in the middle, make sure the middle's lined up well, then I only have one to get off course, where if I start over here and I'm off course, then by the third one, it could be way off course. And then you're going to check. See, that one doesn't need any. And this one needs just maybe a line right there. Okay, now I have all my tessellations drawn on here. Now, some of you might have a specific idea like MC Escher, I want to do a fish or something, and you're going to know what it looks like. But for some of us, I just kind of did some silly lines, and um, so it's kind of like looking at clouds and trying to see what you see in your piece. Um, you could just color them um, different colors. Maybe you want to pick like all warm colors and do, you know, red, orange, and yellow. Maybe you want to do rainbow colors. Um, that's up to you. But some of you are going to look in there and go, oh my gosh, I see something in there. I'm kind of seeing like, I don't know, some kind of animal maybe. Like I got two sets of legs here and then a whole bunch of stuff going on up here. Um, maybe it's like a dog with a crown or something. So maybe I would go like this, make this a crown, put a diamond up here. Um, and then I could color this in using color pencils. So those would be my legs. My face would be up here somewhere. And I can make this its tail. I don't know what kind of animal that is, you guys. Weird. Maybe it's a rabbit. You know what? I should have done that. I should have made these two rabbit ears. Maybe I still can. It's a crown on a rabbit. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and do that to all of them. Um, so this one's going to become a rabbit with two ears and my crown. My eyes over here, my little rabbit nose, um, and then just keep doing that to all of them, and then you can color, color it in. So even on the little ones that you're like, what is going on here? Here is my fluffy tail, right? Um, and then try to get all that's their leg. So maybe I want to do like this on each of the paws to show that's the paw. You can use Sharpie um, and then go back with color pencil if you'd like. Um, otherwise, I do want them colored in color pencil. And I got my crown. Here's my two bunny ears. Okay, so you'll just do all of them and add your color. All right, you guys, I can't wait to see what you create.